I said it last week to stop whatever you were doing and go watch Ashura episode 1 and a lot of you took my advice because that was a insane premiere that I don't think many of us expected. This uh, whole idea of an isekai with portals opening up, characters coming to and from, and I wasn't really sure what they are building into but especially after episode 2 now it seems more like a battle royale isekai. But I was expecting we would just focus on those two characters that we got introduced to because I didn't really take a look at like my anime list or anything and look at the character listings and instead no we kickstart in a completely different set of characters and I'm like oh this is interesting big skeleton man tree like monster this woman and I'm like okay that's all well and good oh there's a shit ton of wyverns in the sky this is going to be a cool cast of characters we don't even really focus on them too much instead we go over to this general who honestly I thought was going to be the first to die in that little hut area and instead seems to be one of our main characters as well. And then there's this other wyvern with like extra arms who apparently has like an entire arsenal between Excalibur and the legendary shield that can block a dragon's fiery death of explosion. And it so casually cuts the big boy in half. I'm left just flabbergasted because usually by the end of a second episode, you have a pretty good idea of the characters you're going to be following, the progression of the story, how it's going to work out. Yet I leave episode 2 with a general idea, like the idea of they're all kind of going to end up in the same location. There is going to be a battle royale of such, I mean, especially if you look at both the opening and ending, they tease some fights, like especially our main guy from episode 1, who fights the skeleton at some point apparently, in terms of, well, at least according to the credits anyway. And just the idea that I can leave the show so not sure what I want to see more of because I really enjoyed episode one and what they did but now I'm more focused on this wyvern than anything but I'm expecting episode three is going to do the same thing we're going to focus on different characters it's almost like we're getting the introductions of all these characters but as we also see the wyvern ended up going to the battlefield that we kind of were at at the end of episode one which was a city but obviously became a ruined wasteland by the end of it. The fact that they're all going to be linking up different fighters different fights that will pop up and then who's ever left standing, let's see, I guess, where the hero ends up going. But I'm like, what even is this show? But this might be the most built different isekai of the season because it's going completely off the beaten path that you're used to, and I'm dying to see more. I do have a full live reaction episode two over on my Patreon. If you want to see my mind break and be like, wait a second, are we actually witnessing that? It's over there if you're interested. Honestly, surprisingly, the 3D in this show isn't that bad. Episode one definitely was a very pleasant surprise with just the honking mass of metal that was mostly 3D. I think the 3D is definitely more noticeable in this episode given it's a brighter environment. So when you have 3D models, whether that's humans or horses or big ass dragons in a bright scene, it's obviously not going to blend in as well as a giant mecha-like beast in the dead of night with fire kind of making it glow a bit. But in general, the 3D movements were very smooth. Like even when it was very noticeable the character models were 3D, the wyvern animation, the speed, the movement, they all, they looked very good in terms of movement. It's just, yeah, if you're not a fan of looking at 3D character models, maybe this episode has a bit too much of that for you. But I mean, I think they more than made up for it with Flash, like especially when that big dragon like first did its hyper beam of death. I mean, that thing, I really expected that general to be the one who was going to die. Like, please tell me I'm not the only one. When you're sitting in this big tent, you have the, the general, there's a woman, I think there was a guy there too. I was like, oh, you know, that, that girl or the guy is going to be the one who's probably going to end up fighting and doing something crazy. No, like she saved his ass. They all got exploded. And honestly, as silly as I felt, because I'm thinking the whole time if we're fighting a dragon get a big ass crossbow this dude summons one he like does some chanting some what he was doing but he summoned that bad boy and I'm like here we go let's let's stab the, and it just bounces off his neck I was like damn it I was getting hyped up for this boy and then in comes the wyvern who just I mean this dragon literally has one arm loss his wings are pretty messed up. He has this big, like, spear sticking out of his stomach. And honestly, like, you have to wonder, what the hell did that to a dragon? And then in comes this little boy who decides to say, hey, listen, not only am I going to shoot a magical bullet into your eye and explode it to the point of rupturing your skull, I'm also going to cut you in half after using my magical shield of death. And I'm like, how can you not be excited and want to see more of this character? And then just the, it felt like there was a rivalry because this dude's like, I can't be friends with you, my position, you know how many I've heard of your kind. He's like, listen, boss, you still my homie. I got you. And I'm like, I need more of that. Yet I know episode three could focus back on the episode one crew or it could focus on a completely different crew. They introduced two new crews in this episode and the relevancy of either one of them is remains to be seen. But the idea of opening these portals 
and having creatures come in through it or the idea of technologies or just the fact that other characters from other worlds can be a part of this one now is such a fascinating idea and it takes so many influences from so many shows and books I've read or watched, yet it also feels like it's doing something pretty interesting because, like I mentioned, it doesn't really, in episode one, like, the it is pretty gory, but it's not to the point of being like, it's an edge factor, right? Like, it, you're seeing, like, uh, well, the beginning of this episode, these wyverns are, like, ripping intestines out. It's pretty intense, but it doesn't feel like those are just there to be like, we want you to talk about the show because it's gory. That is an added bonus for those of us who enjoy the intensity of, like, if you're gonna say characters are gonna die, make it look brutal especially if these beasts are ripping them apart or something's being stomped on or anything like that. So do that because it enhances it. But the thing that has me excited about the future of this isn't how gory it is, it's how many interesting characters, how many interesting ideas, and the uncertainty of where this big competition or where they're all going to meet up is actually going to line up by the end. I have no damn idea. Like, I've seen, like, a thousand anime series at this point, and, like, not an exaggeration. Like, I, I'm pretty close to that number, give or take. And while I definitely see the general idea and vibe, the world building, like, there's at one point when they're using the radio before the big tent gets exploded, they just have Crystal seemingly powering the radio. Like, it's not really focused on but it's like those little attention to detail moments in the background visuals that just make me say I'm getting a vibe of how this world operates without needing an info dump to do so like that's I love to see that stuff the water painting aesthetic for some of the like the images that they'll show throughout the episode it's just it's such an interesting show the only thing I really have an issue with is how Disney slash Hulu subtitle it because there's a lot of like narrator one or official one it helps because there's a lot of character names so seeing the character names next to the subtitles works but uh you know just like intense music playing civilian one says it gets a bit much but it is what it is i'm just glad it's a simulcast i mean half these people who license shows decide to hold on to things for dear life and don't give us legal weekly releases so i'll take what i can get if it's this or nothing i will take it it's just i would prefer how a high dive or a crunch roll would subtitle it but that's just me good music uh the production while the 3d was definitely a lot more noticeable in this episode i definitely think the 3d movements looked good it's just the character models because of how bright the environment was didn't blend in as well as they did in episode one but i think this was a better episode than episode one in episode one i was hyping up so i think they did something right but let me know what you're feeling because i fuck with this show i really do it's really good to me but let me know what you're feeling down below leave a like if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new around here of course ring that bell so you can get notified when i upload more of the channel and like you mentioned we have a full live reaction over on my patreon and hey while you're over there you also get a video shout out all right so today we have vi anthony silva carry me mac vale christopher stevenson and matthew so i appreciate the support everyone please take care and have a good one